Today we're working on a, a Vauxhall Corsa D. Um, basically, assuming that your fan's gone and you've checked your fuses and the fuses are still intact, you may have to replace your fan. Uh, today I'll show you how to do that in the little tricks and hints for the rest of us commoners who don't have fancy tools. Okay, today we're working on every paedophile's favourite car, the Vauxhall Corsa. If you want to pick up 12 year olds in a McDonald's car park, eh, car park, this is the car for you. So what we've got here is we've got a little problem. <laughs> Our fan does not work on position one. Right, it does not work. So we're going to just replace the entire, the entire uh, fan for the inside of the car that blows all the, the heat at your face. So what we're going to need for this job is first of all, you're going to need yourself a T10 and that's to get the glove box off because the fan is behind the glove box, right? So there's four little screws held in, held in by this T10. If you don't have a T10, this isn't the end of the world. All you have to do is take your favourite screwdriver uh, and basically like flatten it down uh, and grind it down until you can actually fit it in the Torx uh, screw itself. If you don't want to do that with your thingy bobber, might I recommend getting yourself a little bit, right? This little bit is a, give me a second here, an S2 SL3. This little flathead standard size here, you can see that on there. S2 SL3, that will fit in your screw and you'll be able to screwdriver those Torx heads out of there. So as for the now, we're just going to get straight into it, right? It's never going to be easy, it's going to be awkward. So your first Torx is going to be, obviously it's going to be a quarter inch drive. Um, nobody has a quarter inch ratchet anymore, so what you do is you get your 3 8 to quarter inch reducer and put it on your shitty ratchet that you don't know where it came from. I think I might have stole it. So the screws are as such. You open the glove box, there's one there in that corner. There's one there in that corner. And there's two of these underneath at about the same space. And let's see if we can find them. There's one there. And where's the last one? There's one there in that corner. So it's like boop, 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 boop. So what we're going to do is we're going to get onto the loosening. I'm going to loosen the bottom ones first so that the glove box doesn't fall down and the weight cracks the ones underneath. I'm going to put this down here and hopefully we'll get a little view of what's going on. You got your T10. Get it in there and set it to loosen. We're going to loosen this bad boy by hand. Yeah, or rather by ratchet. If you don't have this ratchet, I've already shown you the number of screwdriver you need to get your blade to stick in there and pull it out. Right, so that's almost one away. That's just in there. Hand tight. Great. Let's do the other one on the other corner. That's it, hand tight. You will loosen this bad boy off. I would put it on a magnetic tray, but none of you guys will have a magnetic tray. So I'll just put it somewhere sensible and show you where to put it when I've not got a magnetic tray. So that's me just taking the, the Torx head off now. I'm just doing it with the bit itself, unscrewing with the bit itself. You got a cup holder? Use it for all your spare crap. This one I'm going to do the same with. My hand's in here. Just finish it off. Put it in your cup holder. These ones here, they can be a little more awkward if you've got a long screwdriver. It's going to be a little bit tricky, but you should be able to do it. If like me, however, you have a Torx heads, just going to do this. So this is the top left inside the glove box now. 
that's loose enough to do by hand now. Then you get the other corner, get your top right, get your tox head in here. And then you gotta take your head off once they're looser. Do it by hand, much easier. And try to use that ratchet the whole way. Whoop, it slipped out. Put the third screw in your cup holder. And then after you've got the fourth one loose, you can put the fourth one in your cup holder. Right, as you can see, four screws are out, we've still got a glove box. If you follow your plastics round to the side, you'll notice that it's under your rubber for your door. See that? And there's also a little pin in here. So all you gotta do is you gotta pull straight back. I grab underneath, pull straight back, and that just comes off and exposes not only your fuse box, but your fan. So that white thing there is your fan. That's a piece of ducting that can come off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just remove this from the car. I'm going to remove this ducting just to give myself easier access to the car. There's a pin under here. You can tend to pull it out. If you can't pull that pin out, I'll give you a close up in a minute. Just get a screwdriver in there, the same one you used for your Torx head if you needed it and then lever down. This pin comes out and goes in your cup holder over here. And then you should be able to pull down and pull it free from that section. Your plastics have come out. The next stage on your fan is to get the electrics disconnected from it. Uh, it'll just be the fan, you don't need to worry about the resistor. So the connection for the fan See that orange one there? And it's running in to the base of the fan unit. Um, there are two little squeezy clips either side, squeeze it in. And if you've got enough muscle, you can pull this out. See how there's two squeezy clips? These just squeeze in and it pulls out. Well, it doesn't pull out easily sometimes. Sometimes it's sticky, in which case you need your good old friend set of needle nose molies or standard molies if you've got a small enough set and they'll pull that right off so the adventure isn't done here what we're going to do now what we're going to do now is we're going to you need a 5.5 mil socket to get the three screws underneath the fan off right so there's one of them there oh sorry that's not it there's one of them there that's 5.5 mil right if you can't get that off, that 5.5mm, because you don't have a 5.5mm socket, again, use your good friends, the mole grips. The first one's easy. The first one that's just under the right hand side is easy. Clamp it on and start twisting. See how that's coming off like that? So if you don't have your 5mm bit. There's another one on the left hand side that's also easy to get off and it's a difficult one in the back. Uh, let me find it. Where's this one? There it is. So there's a difficult one in the back. Now you'll see that they're slotted. That's because I've previously had to take the fan out before. What I did was I took a Dremel and just slotted them for easier access. Right? Uh, you can use a hacksaw blade, you can use a Dremel, you can use a damn good knife and put slots in all of them and that means that if all this goes to shit and you don't have a 5.5mm socket like I don't, you can just use a screwdriver and do it that way. So I'm going to do it the screwdriver way instead of the mole grip way. It's difficult to hold this and turn at the same time so to get the gist right screwdriver out. Normally I'd use a hand to push up on the screwdriver and one hand to twist. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so the first one is loosened off. I used a screwdriver to get it. 
one hand to push up, one hand to twist once you've already slotted it. If you haven't done that, just keep locking your mole grips, grips onto the flat side. See the flat sides of the... And just twist it out. So that's the first one done. It's going to go in a cup holder. I'm going to do the same with the other two. The one at the back's a tricky one. Uh, the one way over here somewhere. Uh, where is it? So you've got number two is here. Number three is where are you a bastard right in there with number three it's just a case of getting a small enough set of grips or pliers and just keep on fucking fighting at it twisting a tiny bit at a time until you get it out and then once it's out make sure you put that slot in so you can screwdriver it out nice and easy right so now that all three of your screws holding your fan in are out I'm willing to wager that you've got sore fingers, sore hands, a sore side, and a, a sore face. So all the screws are out, one or two things is going to happen. Either that's going to fall out, that thing there is going to fall out and hit you in the face, or it's going to jam and stick and you're going to have to pull it out and be worried that you're going to break it. I've been on the lucky end of the bargain, mine fell out and hit my face. So out it comes. And this is your fan right here so one of the common problems with the fan is the in there see the oh, I don't know if you can see the copper but there's copper in there and the brushes will block that up with a uh, absolute garbage you can see that's orange enough but uh, quite often they they're black and they've been clogged up you might get away with just cleaning those and your fan being okay the other thing that might happen is that water's ingressed somehow through this nylon impenetrable surface and uh, stuck up the bairn in my case that's got quite a bit of friction which means one setting one is not powerful enough to turn the fan two three and four are but uh, there's nothing i can really do about that you can't free that off in any way really um because the bairns are all sealed uh, you can take the fan off the top and stuff but it's 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 a it's a lost cause so what we're going to do is we're going to take our Denso out the box I'm going to stick this bad boy up in there I think it's the same fan that you get in a Punto of all things so it's I guess in case it's a reverse in the process right so your electrics are going to have to go to the back so there's my electric bit that will go to the back this will push up into the middle you can actually see the electrical contacts in that one are nice and clean I will find a way that these little lugs here fit not the big one the little ones find a way that it fits there we go, we found the way it fits. Now we've got to put the screws back in. I would start with the front two and do the back one last, because the front two hold the weight of the thing. So give me two minutes, I'll be back as soon as I've got those three screws back in, I'll show you the location. So if you're really struggling with this screw here, and this screw here, and the one at the back, don't worry, the first time I did this I had to use mole grips. And it took me about half an hour to get those three out and then again uh, because I don't have a 5.5mm socket the second time with the 5.5mm socket I borrowed it took me about probably about five minutes tops and this time because I've already slotted my, my heads the screwdriver it took me about a minute and a half there so that's that's not so bad but just bear with it you'll be you'll be sore and uncomfortable and swearing and hot and bothered just keep going so the last screw over here, oh that's not the one, that one took as much time as the other two together. So that's all three of those screws back in now, slotted for easy access to the screwdriver if you have a 5.5mm uh, socket by all means use that, if not use the needle nose, uh, needle nose mole grips to grip the sides. So the fan's in now, now we've got to reconnect the electrics. So remember that thing with the squeezy sides we pulled out? This is it here. It'll only go in one way. 
So let's find out, just move it around until you find the way it does go. That's this way. So push it in until it clicks. And this unit's pretty solid now. So that's the, uh, the fan being replaced. So to give you an idea of what position I was in when I was working in this car, uh, let's let's uh, show you. This is the position I was in when working in it. So as you can see, I'm lying on my side over the door with my head jammed into the corner. It's not comfortable. Like there's the console, I'm jammed into the corner. You can see the veins popping out my head, but it's just the way it has to be. Just remember and set your seat back at its farthest point. Make it a bit easier for yourself. Next steps of testing. After your fan's been put in and your electrics are plugged in, don't put the glove box on yet, just in case there's a fault. Set your fan to zero. Set it zero. Turn your ignition on and run the car. Turn your radio off so you can hear. And then you can test your fan. It's, it's very quiet, but it is working. The, I can feel the air coming out here. Set your fan to the face part, because obviously you took off the leg part, the ducting for the leg part. Set it to the face part, where it's blasting you in the face. Turn up to one, make sure your vents are open, or centralised in the case of a Corsa. And there you go, you can feel that. Uh, check number two. A little louder, a little more powerful. You can see my vent is broken there. Set number three, more powerful again, fantastic. Number four, you can really hear it now. That's an effective fix of your fan. If your fan still isn't working from that point, there's a good chance it's the resistor. And the resistor is held roughly in the same place. I'll show you. If it's still broken, it might be the resistor. These wires here, they go up into that little white housing underneath there. I'll zoom in. So we're going under. Your resistor is held in by one little screw. Very easy to get off and you pull it out. But that's a story for another day. If you've got this far, um, drop. if you could drop a like, that would help me. Uh, any comments, I'll try and reply to. And if you could do a subscribe, that would be great. If you don't want to get the notifications, um, just make sure the little bell's not clicked on and it won't bother you, it won't come up. But uh, it would help me huge, even if you don't look at my other videos. So thanks for popping in. I'll try and make this video as uh, edited and groovy as possible.